Hello, everybody. Good morning, everybody. I'm Frida Stauffer. I was sitting here talking and eating my sandwich, my breakfast sandwich, and then when I was ready to end the video, I realized I wasn't recording at all. <laughs> so, um, I just uh, ate a keto uh, a sandwich on keto bread. It was fried salami, eggs, and and uh, Monterey Jack cheese. It was really good. And sorry you didn't get to see it. <laughs> Maybe you'd rather not see it. I don't know. Anyway, I was working in the garden this morning because I noticed that the places where I had put milk powder, it looked like it had made a waxy film on on top of the ground. So I was just digging and, and uh, scratching the dirt to aerate, make sure that it's not sealed and the air can get in. And um, I, I wanted to do something in the garden before I eat breakfast because that's important to me is that the garden gets taken care of and I don't eat breakfast right away in the morning. Um, but I had a really good time last night at the at the um, mother-son dinner and dance with my Hassan. Um, some children from local uh, Memphis um, area middle schools and elementary schools. I don't know if there were any high schoolers invited or not, but there, there was a cute group of children. They had selected some of the smarter children in the, in the um, city, uh, from the city area schools to come uh, to this mother-son dance. And it was really sweet because the alumni of the university it was held at um, brought their own mothers so uh, they were modeling and teaching the younger boys how to treat their moms. My son brought me, they gave him a, a rose to give me, they gave all the little boys and some roses to take to their moms. And it was so sweet, <laughs> very nice. The moms felt good and the kids felt good. And those uh, old men are very um, focused on trying to uh, save like save the city of Memphis. And I believe that's, um, they're trying to recruit kids, smart kids to come to this university um, because they want to play a role in educating them and teaching them the right way to go um, so that they can be, uh, give back to the city once they're grown up. And I admire that gesture and that, uh, effort because and I'm happy if my me and my kids can help with that effort because as every city does Memphis has its own problems and if we can help then I'm happy with that uh, if we can help fix the problems I don't know if we can or not but these young uh, smart extra smart kids are the future of the city if they stay here. They'll be the future leaders. And I can see, uh, I can see the wisdom of, of uh, them trying to recruit them early. I'm not saying my son will definitely go to that university, but I do appreciate um, the opportunity and the um, invitation to um, to join their fraternity at this uh, young age. Those babies that were there, some of them were really tiny <laughs> little boys. Um, they would look so cute in their little suits and dancing with their moms. We didn't really dance, but 
first of all, I don't know. My son doesn't know how to dance and I have asthma, so any kind of movement would make me sick, <laughs> breathless. I, I try to avoid excessive movement, except in the garden. And in the garden, I can take my time. It's not like keeping up with a tune. It was a beautiful evening. This food was delicious. They gave us this delicious salad with uh, it had walnuts and strawberries and grapes and organic spring mix, <coughs> some chopped sweet peppers, and they just, it was really nice. They did have some meat items, but we didn't eat those. I was happy my son ate salad. I was like, if you like this salad, I'll make it for you at home. <coughs> Coughing, talking too much is making me cough more. So I guess I've talked enough for now. I'll, I'll try to record a little bit outside. <laughs> So oh, I finally have enough plants to fill this wall uh, this one is a, a darker arrowhead I forgot if its name is brown or chocolate or, or what <laughs> but it's darker and then over here is one with pink veins pink stems it's also an arrowhead and I got this, well, the two arrowheads I got from um, Home Depot. And this one, uh, I don't really know what it's called. It's a Diefenbachia, okay. It's a Diefenbachia I had gotten from Aldi a while ago. <coughs> That's a Peperomia I got from Aldi a while ago. And this is a... Uh, Maiden hair fern that I got from the Home Depot yesterday. That's a coffee tree that I got from Aldi a while ago. That's a Rex begonia I got from Lowe's last week. And that is a uh, peace lily that I got from the Home Depot a while ago. I'm having such fun collecting these. And now my whole rack is filled again. And I'm happy about that. Last winter, I I was very sad because everything froze in here, except for two plants that made it through the coldest part of the winter because I had COVID in December and I was too sick 
to get out of bed and and do something about about it when my heater broke. There's my Boston fern. Um, and here are my hanging plants that my mom had given me cuttings of. Well, actually that um, pot that was in there was mine. And I had taken cuttings off before it died, before it froze to death. There's a kind of fern. Um, there's a new uh, pothos that I bought yesterday from the Home Depot. I had never seen a silver pothos before, but now I got one. <laughs> this is a peperomia, a red one. Um, it doesn't like to be overwatered for sure. And here's a heart heart ivy that I've gotten from Kroger a few weeks ago. Um, this is one of the ones, this is the rabbit foot fern that had survived over the winter. It's looking a bit scruffy, but it's still alive. And it has new growth, so I have hope for it. I repotted it and I uh, stopped watering it because I, it had, I think I'd overwatered it then, but now it's better. And here's a spire plant that I took some babies off to try to propagate in the house. This is a watermelon peperomia. I did not know that until recently. It's doing all right. I had gotten that at Aldi a while ago. It may need some water, but other than that, it's okay. Now, um, this plant, I believe it's going to go outside. I believe I'm gonna plant it outside. My grandmother used to have it in a shaded area uh, in Maryland. I think I'm gonna end up taking it outside and planting it. It was something that she had and everyone has cuttings. So my mom gave me the cuttings and I rooted them and they're growing. Now I think I'm gonna plant them outside. I think they're ready. There's another piece of that in there too. And here's my burrow's tail. He's, uh, he was all goopy when I first bought him, but um, that these grow lights stay on a lot. So, so he's uh, re started uh, reaching up towards the grow light. And I didn't know it would do that, but he did. And this is another kind of fern. I'm not, not sure exactly what kind it says. It's a holly fern, fortune holly fern. So it needs water, but other than that, it's fine. And those up there were cuttings for my mom. And they're growing all right. Um, and this one... <sighs> is growing. I need to turn it again. I keep having to turn it. It was completely dead. I thought it was dead forever, but it's growing back now. <laughs> the leaves are getting bigger and I'm happy. I'm so happy right now. It's a philodendron, but it's a horsehead philodendron. It, the leaves should get really, really big huge um, and that is a fig there fiddle leaf fig I'm going to take the dead leaf off um, it has a new leaf up here and it's really big the other one's still growing and it has let me see yeah it needs water it needs a drink no let me see if Alice Alice is fine, Alice. I don't want to overwater. She's still damp underneath. So I'm going to wait a few days to water her again. And there's my alocasia, which is, which is a kind of elephant ear. It's related to the elephant ear family. There are a lot of beautiful plants that are related to elephant ears. And I just thought, saw this, it was so cute, and I found it at Walmart for like six or seven dollars. And it was so cute, I just wanted it. 
and there it's, are some cuttings I had started and I had them in the house. Now I have them out here. My uh, mandevilla appears, both of them appear to be growing and my uh, jasmine, it seems to be growing a little bit. It's been a while, it's been a while. It doesn't seem like it's had a growth spurt lately, but it had a little like, it crept like a centimeter or two. <laughs> and this is the garden this morning. Things are growing back here. So I'm thankful for that. The sunflowers and beans and cucumbers are ready to go get planted any minute now. There is my ZZ plant there in the corner. That one doesn't like much water and it also doesn't like sunshine. It wants low light. And there's a spider plant and the kittens do play with it. It is uh, more that like more attractive to cats than, than even catnip apparently because my kittens are uh, playing with it a lot and, and I learned from my houseplant group on Facebook that cats love spider plants more than they love catnip. <laughs> I may have to put it out of reach because I really don't want the, the leaves to be get chewed up. These are some things I've been planting. Um, I planted this a package of plants that I had gotten from Aldi. It's for um, pollinators. It's a pollinator garden. So there's a plant there and a row of other plants. And then I planted that one that I got from Aldi like last week or two. Last week, I guess. And then down here are two more that I just planted this morning. I got those from the Home Depot and they were uh, free. The lady gave them to me for free. They don't usually uh, mark down plants that are nearly dead. They put them in the compactor and throw them away. But that lady was make, had made an executive, de executive decision to give these plants away because she said someone could still, they could still live if someone planted them and took care of them. I need to give them fertilizer now so they can grow. <laughs>